This is a nice example of yeah, a few things, parametric modeling, of course, configurations, and a few other things I'll just talk through. So I was busy creating uh, my own catalog of uh, bearings, right? So you can go to SKFs or any of the you know, uh, bearing manufacturers and, and download their catalog, which um, I did. And, you know, you can find dimensions and the key dimensions, obviously, are the, uh, the outer the inner and the thickness. Uh, this one happens to be a tapered roller bearing, so it's got a slightly sh different shaped um, you know, cross section. Here you can see, there you go. All right, so the, the interesting thing uh, is, is not that. So let's have a quick look at the, uh, the features I used. Uh, and you'll see in the tree over here that oh, probably a good half of them are variables. Uh, and in fact, actually, if you use the performance monitor here, um, you can, uh, and you can just sort of find that on the, on the left side there. You can actually see, <laughs> if you look at features, that I had 19 variables, so it's more than half of them, right? Um, anyway, this is a useful little thing you can use to diagnose issues with your part studios or, or assemblies. Uh, it'll tell you the regeneration time, and this is a, in a trivial at this moment. Uh, and you can get some other things interesting about your connection and, and the browser. Uh, not important right now. If you do want to see the gener regeneration of feature by feature, you can actually hit the little stopwatch here and you can get exactly the timing that all of the features, it's ordered by default from slowest to, to fastest. And uh, yeah, this is a trivial amount of time for this. So yeah, lots of variables that are controlling the, the geometry and there's really only just one sketch, which is the main uh, actor here. Uh, it's the sketch that's going to do the, the roller tapered roller and the uh, races uh, and then there's another couple of things later on to do the the cage uh, that's the cage there now you see these blue blobs and there's another blue blob down the bottom it's an interesting thing it's telling me that there's a new version of something that's linked uh, normally you would see something like this in an assembly where you've linked in a part or a sub assembly from a different document uh, but in this case I'm using a custom feature that I created in another document and treats it the same it's just a link to to another document like any other link and because I've got a new version of that custom feature it's telling me that something's out of date um, and by the way I use these custom features because I was finding myself doing the same kind of thing in every one of my different parts of the uh, bearing catalog uh, one of them was this thing called subtract all from one um, so I would pick the target in this case it was going to be the race and it was going to uh, subtract everything it could uh, from that race so it allows you know that feature allowed me to be very parametric so if I changed uh, my configuration which is actually going to change the size as well as potentially the number of um, cylinders uh, or bearings then that cutout feature will still work because it's cutting everything else out that it can from this uh, this race so that was that custom feature the other one was to to do a composite from all again to keep this make a composite part from everything that it sees uh, really there's no oh, whoops there's no really user interface for this uh, it's, it's just well there's no user interface other than just say do it it will take all of the parts in the part studio and then make a composite out of them um, because I wanted one single composite part to insert into the assembly or you know when I want to actually use these things uh, so again rather than having to pick it individually and then you know get out of, get in trouble when I go down to a much smaller diff um, you know this is going to still give me a single composite part so these are utility custom features that I created for myself just you know for my own quality of life and now uh, you know, separately I've upgraded them and it's telling me that they're out of date so you can either individually right click on it and say update the link document and it'll give you a list uh, of, of the you know tell you what the versions are available for update and you know I was going from v6 to v7 I fixed something with the allowance for that that was my uh, note to myself there and I can do the other one separately or I can do them both together if I just click on the part studio tab and say update link document it'll show me that there's two things it's going to try and find everything in this part studio to to upgrade 
uh, to the new version. So, uh, you know, I could do a selectively, I could choose a particular version to go to, but in this case, I'm just going to go update all, and it'll take us to the, late, to the latest, and those blue blobs will go away, uh, and everything's good. I guess the other thing I wanted to point out in this little quick demo was the uh, configurations are pretty key. Um, and this is, you know, I can expand this out a lot. Uh, and I did not type all these individually. Um, what I did do was cut and paste, because uh, you can cut and paste, say, from a CSV table. I use Google Sheets. Uh, I recommend you do too. <laughs> but yeah, Google Sheets is convenient because I got the numbers into there, um, you know, by scraping a PDF file or, or whatever else, and did a little bit of cleanup work in, in Google Sheets, and then uh, cut and paste them into here, and you know, did a little bit of work on, on the names, um, so that uh, you know that it was all all consistent. But you can see along the top here, these are all of the variables and the ones that I'm actually modifying as part of the configuration. So you see it goes from quite a small bore diameter uh, up to some fairly uh, nasty big ones over 150 millimeter bore. It's a pretty large bearing. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the configuration. And then when you want to use it, you just choose uh, the appropriate configuration from the pull down. Um, and if you're inserting this into an assembly, it will give you the same option to generate the correct configuration uh, as you need there. So anyway, I've got a bunch of these different types and styles of bearings from you know, tapered roller bearings, um, radial ball bearings, you know, thrust bearings, and so on and so forth. Um, all done in a similar kind of way, and uh, it's very, very convenient to do it this way.